All right, thank you for coming out. Can everyone hear me okay? In the back, can you hear me? Perfect. All right. All right, has, has anyone been the lucky candidate of being hacked? Yeah? Me too. <laughs> Apparently, that's a requirement to get good at anything is to be the sacrificial lamb, whether you signed up for it or not. But uh, unfortunately, I've been hacked more times than I want to admit. And as a result, I've gotten pretty good at not getting hacked. <laughs> so, and what I'd like to share today is how, you know, some of the things that happen when an unfortunate situation like that happens, how to, you know, ensure that that doesn't happen. But more importantly, I want to talk about planning, you know, it's better to plan to be hacked and be prepared to handle it and pray it never happens and take extra steps as time goes on to ensure that that day never comes. So, so what if your website gets hacked, you know? Well, your website's either going to be down, it's going to be defaced, or probably at a minimum, it's not going to be functioning quite the way that you expected it to. Uh, sometimes even websites that get hacked, they don't even know it for a long time, uh, depending on the type of hack. It could be malware, and it may be that your users are getting infected, and that's purely the purpose of the hack. So it's, it's a really difficult situation to be in and a difficult one to you know, uh, address. But what happens to you? You know, your, rev your revenue for your website, if your website does indeed produce revenue uh, for your organization or you individually, that's probably either going to stop or be affected in some negative way. And that can be affected in multiple ways. It can ne negatively affect your SEO rankings. So if you've ever went uh, to any of these other talks and, you know, about SEO, well, SEO is not an overnight thing. I know SEO very well, and it takes time. And it takes a lot of effort. And if all of a sudden one day your website gets hacked, and tomorrow you're no longer in the top ten, much less the top three standings. And we talk about revenue being affected. Well, your traffic just went away, and that's going to affect your revenue. So that's a big deal. And that may be harder to bounce, from, bounce back from than maybe your reputation or other things, because SEO is not an easy thing to do. It could also damage your reputation, more importantly, your company's reputation. And that's, that's honestly, maybe if you're smaller, it's uh, easy to bounce back from. As a large organization, that reputation is something that you have been building for years, possibly decades. How much money, how much time, how much... Uh, I mean, it's like, it's like insult to injury. You've already lost revenue. Your website went down. You're playing damage control. You're trying to get back up. And, oh, by the way, you have a reputation for an unsecure website. That's ouch. So that's a, that's a bad, bad scenario. And, unfortunately, you could be liable for damages. If your website got infected with malware, well then that malware is possibly being spread to your users who are visiting the website. Uh, what does that look like? Are you going to be liable? You know, get legal advice. Uh, maybe you should have insurance. If you get to a certain level in your business, these are things you need to be asking yourself is, at what point do I need to have insurance? Because you, I mean, you could do everything right. I mean, my goodness. NASA's been hacked. The FBI gets hacked. Uh, name a company. They've probably been hacked. Unfortunately, it happens. But the key here is, in WordPress land, you don't want to be an easy target. And you want to take additional steps. The more serious you level up in your business and your website of things to prevent situations like this from happening. But even when all else fails, there is insurance out there that can handle those financial burdens that come with that. So these are things you may want to talk about with your insurance agent, talk about with your attorney. 
And maybe you stair-step that in later as time goes on and time progresses. Build a budget to pay for those things. Things to think about. Oh, and by the way, you know, you plan on going out to dinner tonight? Or you got a fancy date on Friday? Hacked website might, might ruin that, those plans, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, I, I've had a hacked website ruin my week. It happens. It depends on how big the site is and how intricate and involved it is. So it's very important that you have a plan in place. In addition, how does that make you feel? You know, we talk about the damages. We talk about, oh, my website's down and, you know, uh, it's not working right. Oh, but how does it make you feel? You know, it's like someone broke into your house and graffitied your bedroom and then left. Ooh, I feel violated, you know. But just to make sure that it's not just me that feels violated or me that feels, uh, this is bad, I decided to consult an expert in the field of feelings. My wife, of course, you know, she's an expert. She actually is. She's a psychotherapist. And so I asked what her opinion as a professional psychotherapist in neuroscience, her opinion on hacked websites. And here's what she said. When someone gets hacked, they go into a neurological disorganized mental state. This instinctive response causes the brain's neocortex to go offline momentarily. Thus, their decision making and problem-solving abilities are temporarily inaccessible. Security is so much more than just technology. It's also neurological. And I was blown away. It's like, wow. And it's Shannon O'Neill. She's a psychotherapist here in Asheville. And I was just like, wow, I never really thought of it like that. But it's true. You know, when my website got hacked, I was in a state of freeze. What, you can fight, you know, flight, or freeze. That's the three things they teach you in, you know, as an instinctive response. Well, I go into, what do I do, you know? Well, that's not the time to start planning on what to do, come, come to find out, because your mind is, well, apparently it's temporarily inaccessible. But it, it was interesting that, she didn't focus on the website because she doesn't care about someone's... She doesn't care about your website, by the way. She didn't care about my website either. She has a website, too, and she doesn't care about that. What she cares about is people and people's feelings. And you thought this was going to be a technical talk. <laughs> it will be, I promise. She, you notice she said when someone gets hacked, you're violated. And there's no way to turn that off unless you're just not human. And as uh, far as I can tell, everyone in the room is here human. So how do we safeguard against this? What do we do if you get hacked and you're in that position of, I'm overwhelmed, I'm frozen, my jaw's hitting the ground, and even if you are a developer and you are capable of doing the things that it takes that I'm going to talk about, I'm capable of doing it, but am I really the best person to do it in the moment where I'm temporarily inaccessible of my problem-solving and decision-making abilities. Well, how about we have a plan before you get hacked? And that's the key. It's an emergency plan. I guarantee you that there is a plan. There's an evacuation plan for this building if there's a fire. If there's not, there's a big problem with this facility. I highly doubt that that's the case. There is an evacuation plan. If this place catches fire, they say, go out this door, go straight out, stand near the tree out there, and we'll do a head count, whatever. There is an actual written plan. That exists for a reason. If you don't plan to succeed, you plan to fail, and there's no doubt in that. And so it's important to implement as part of your plan, not just, hey, here's what we're going to do when it goes bad, but let's do some things proactively to pre hopefully prevent that from happening. And let's even implement things at certain intervals. Hey, let's audit ourselves. Let's look at this annually. Let's look at this ever so often and see, is our plan out of date? Is it still viable? You know, maybe have someone else look at it that's 
not so close to the project and get their perspective. Have someone externally audit you. The key is you need to have things in place before things go bad. And then when they do go bad, what do you do? Have a plan. And create an incident response plan as part of your plan. And that's what you're going to do is, OK, the place is on fire. All right, we go out that door. There's a, that exit sign over there. It's lit up nice and red. That's, that's, by the, that's per the plan. And that's what we're going to do as well. Keep in mind, a lack of planning on your part doesn't constitute an emergency on mine. So if you decide that that guy over there is part of my plan, you probably ought to let him know that. <laughs> because if he doesn't know, uh, he's, you know, and he gets a phone call, he's gonna, it's, it's going to slow down the time frame to getting your website back up and running and damage control. That's, it's going to slow down the progress. And maybe he's not available. So who's your backup plan? That needs to be in your plan. So implementing security measures. First of all, use better hosting. You know, uh, I, I've heard this three times today. What hosting company do you suggest? <laughs> and, you know, and I say, well, the first thing that comes out, out of my mouth is, what kind of website do you have? There's not a hosting company, unfortunately, that is the hosting company. Every website is different. Everyone's needs are different. What works for one website may not work for another for various reasons, and that's a whole nother talk. But the reality is you should be focusing on what are your needs and then figuring out what hosting meets those needs. So anyone that wants a quick, what company do you suggest we go with? I'll tell you who I use, but that's meeting my needs in this moment, and those needs may change down the road. So the needs for your website or websites will be much different. Keep in mind, your hosting is the first line of security. So if you've got cheap $5 hosting or the cheapest hosting, and things go wrong, and you call up hosting company XYZ and say, hey, guys, my website got hacked. I really don't know how good the service is going to be considering you're paying $5 a month for your hosting. Maybe they'll be good. Maybe they won't. Maybe the security's not that great because they're trying to cater to a cheap hosting plan that doesn't involve security. That's something to keep in mind. So when you start getting serious about your business and about your website, you need to get serious about your hosting. And part of, part of the serious hosting aspect is they have to keep their servers up to date, no different than the fact that you need to keep your website up to date. One of the most, the first thing that is a red flag in my mind when someone goes, oh, my website's, it just got hacked, I'm a wreck, oh, what do I do? They're calling their neighbor who knows nothing about websites and they're calling you know, Jim over here who, you know, is an airplane mechanic. He don't know. You know, he's not a web developer. Then they call me and I said, well, did you update your website? or your website up to date? Well, I got to do that? <laughs> yes. That, keeping your website up to date, is, it doesn't require you to be a developer, but it does require you to do that. So, and you can automate some of those things, too. So there's great tools out there. Also, use strong passwords. The... The other part that is a big factor is people will use scripts to brute force their way into your website. Now, good hosting will prevent the brute force attack. Use better hosting. But if you use a strong password, it's a lot more difficult to get into your website. And you don't recycle your passwords. Don't use them in multiple places, on multiple accounts, or ever again. Use them once, make them unique. But use strong passwords and change them periodically. Change your database prefix. Now, I will go into detail, a little bit more detail about this in just a minute, but your database is prefixed on each table so that when someone tries to do a database injection, if they don't know the name of the table where your users are, it's going to be difficult for them to create their own admin user. So we want to make that as hard as possible if they are able to get to a certain level of access. We want to make, we want to make those hurdles as tall 
and as many as possible. And that's what security is. Security is nothing more than a huge layer of hurdles for someone, some intruder to jump over. I like to think of it as an onion. Also, implement local and off-site backups. Now, most people that have a website that are not techie and never really experienced any issues, they go, oh, you know, that's what my hosting company does. Well, that, that might be true. Ask them. Ask them if they do local and offsite. You don't necessarily have to have local. That's more for convenience. But you probably want offsite backups because what if the server goes down hard? And they, they may be able to restore you. Or you get hacked and you need to go back a month ago because you just now realized that you were hacked. And it was a pretty embedded hack that was pretty hard to discover until it started creeping up. So you may need to go back pretty far. And a hosting company, depending on the type of hosting you have, the type of plan, the company itself, they may only have maybe seven days worth of hosting or 30 days. They may not have long-term hosting because that's not part of your plan. But it needs to be part of your plan. So if they don't provide it, find out someone who will. And for everything else, if you're running WordPress these days, you probably want to have some sort of security plugin. Now, there are a lot of security plugins out there. I have one myself uh, that's free. But the reality is, again, not one size fits all. Depending on the type of hosting you have, if you've got cheap hosting, you may have to compensate more with a security plugin. Or if you've got fantastic hosting, you may not need a plugin at all. So that really, that's, again, coming back to hosting. That's really where most of your security is going to be. Uh, security that's handled on the security that's handled on the website itself is what you would consider hardening and shoring up the things that the software itself create vulnerabilities. But you don't want your website, you really don't want your website to try to be a security server because it needs to be the blog or whatever your website's purpose is. So I mentioned changing a database prefix. When you install WordPress, uh, did anyone go to the pre-camp yesterday? Okay, so, and they did a, uh, an example install of WordPress from scratch, correct? Okay, so when you're installing WordPress for the first time, you'll have this screen right here. And this is your golden opportunity to make it easy. Change that WP underscore to something else. Now, I haven't done a recent install on WordPress, so they might be changing it by default these days. Um, someone mentioned that to me, so I'm not sure. But if you get the opportunity, make sure that that does not say WP underscore. Because obscurity is not security, but it's just another layer in the onion of security. And we don't want to make it easy. Now, if you if you want to know what your current prefix is, you can actually go to your wp-config.php file in the root of your website. And there'll be a setting in there that'll tell you what, you, what it is. If you're using wp underscore, do not just change that. You actually have to change your database, and that's a little bit more involved. So there are plugins that do it, but back up your site if you'd plan to go that route. There is a to, I think I referenced a tutorial on how to do it in here. So um, WP Beginner, if you've had a web, WordPress site for any length of time, you've probably been on WPBeginner.com, which is a great resource for learning uh, how to do a lot of things from basic to pretty advanced things. And so if, you're not sh if there's anything on here that you're like, I don't really know how to do it, either find a professional or go to WP Beginner or somewhere online that'll have a good tutorial on how to do it. YouTube's another great resource. As far as security plugins, uh, Security Safe is a plugin that I built. I did not build it for you guys. I actually built it for myself because I was managing a tremendous amount of sites, implementing security features, and I'm going, gosh, this is a nightmare to manage. And so I thought, well, it'd be great to just hit a button and update them all. That'd be fantastic. Well, it's easy to do that if you have a WordPress plugin in the WordPress repository. And so I just start installing it on the websites I use. I'm my biggest customer. <laughs> so when things break, 
I fix them. But um, there are, of course, other people that use them, use the plugin. And many of these other plugins, I actually use some of these other plugins as well. Um, actually, I use every one of these plugins. It depends on the website. It depends on their needs. And so you've got to figure out what works for you. Security is a great uh, plugin. They also have a, uh, they have a web application firewall that goes with their service. So they're, they are a little bit different than the other ones. And I think security, all-in-one, and WordFence are very extensible security plugins. So I recommend checking out all these and figuring out what your needs are and going with the one that makes sense for you. With your incident response plan, the point here is this is going to be the plan that you made while you were mentally coherent, <laughs> hopefully. Um, so basically, your website gets hacked, you get the nasty email going, oh no, a uh, client just told me that their website's hacked, or maybe it's your personal website, and you're freaking out. Grab this plan. This is the plan you're going to grab. It's not the time to change the plan or revise the plan. This is the time to execute the plan. Hopefully, it has already been revised and shored up and made and reviewed regularly. But it needs to be a step-by-step -step plan on what to do, who to call. And so, I always recommend, don't just call me or call John or Fred or Sherry or whoever. Have multiple names in there and phone numbers and emails in your plan. So you're not completely reliant on one person because maybe they're on vacation and they're nowhere near their phone or internet service or whatever, or they're traveling. You don't want your website or your client's website to be down for an extended period of time because you didn't have a backup plan and a backup to the backup. So, and maybe... I say three developers, and you know, and then I hear someone say, well, I have a company that, that takes care of that for me. Well, that's okay. That's actually fantastic. Hopefully, they have at least three developers. If they don't, maybe you need to implement some developers into your plan as a backup in case that falls through. I just want to be prepared. I do not like unforeseen problems in a moment of crisis. I want to know that I know exactly what to do, and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, and we're back up and running. And now the only thing i got to worry about is damage control on the other things that are not technical. So, by the way, make sure they know about it. So just because you're here at this talk today, and you, you, know, I, I, you know my name, and you find out my phone number and email and everything, and you add me to your plan, but I don't know about it, that, that's kind of an issue because if I'm not actively or have history with doing development on your site or another devel a developer doesn't either, there's going to be a delay as well. One, I might not be available or they may not be available. And you still got to get them access to your server or whatever resources that they're going to need to get everything back up and running. Maybe it's your off-site backups. So you're going to want to have access to those types of things, such as your hosting. Know what is your login. What's your password? You want to have access to those assets very readily available. And together, when you're in the moment of crisis, jumping all over the board, trying to gather all this information together is not the time to be doing it. So if you can have all this information together, that process of getting everything back up and running is much smoother. And you don't have to think about it. You just follow the directions. And also, you've got to have backups available for restoration. And the other day I had to do a backup restoration, and we had never done a backup restoration on this particular site. And I was a little nervous about it because it was a big site. And we, we decided to do it on a staging server not live, just another server, to see if it would go well. It did not go well. <laughs> uh, however, that's a good thing, because I want to know that my plan failed before I need it. 
So if you, once you have your plan in place and you go, well, okay, we've we got our backups are here and there and da-da-da-da, all right, let's do a test run. Let's throw up a dev server or a dev site and let's, let's trash it and redo it and run through the process. How long did that take? Are we looking at 30 minutes here? Are we looking at an hour? What are we looking at? You know, I want to know what to expect when the house is on fire. So, now that your, your website's hacked and you're, you're knee deep in it, I mean, you've got your backups already available, you've contacted whoever you need to contact to get things moving forward. This is where your developer, or if you are that person, this is what they're, I would suggest they do. Biggest mistake someone makes on a hacked website is they delete it. Well, we don't want a hacked website. <laughs> well, you actually do because we want to zip that hacked version up so that we can look at it later in a controlled environment so we can figure out what went wrong. But we don't have time for that right now. We just need to zip it. We zip it, we download it, and then we delete everything. But if you delete everything before we have a copy of the contaminated version, and then they ask you, well, what happened? How, how did you get hacked? I don't know. No idea. Well. If I have no idea, how am I going to prevent it from happening again? You don't. You don't know. And so, at least when you have the hacked version, you can spin up a VPS or a, virtu a virtual uh, website locally on your machine and play around with it and see what went wrong. If it's got malware, you might want to do it in a more containerized environment, a virtual environment, so that your computer is not affected or anything like that. So be, be cautious when getting to that aspect, but you want to hand that off to someone who knows what they're doing. From there, I don't like to, and this is why I say delete everything, I don't like to assume that my backup has a good version of WordPress. Honestly, I don't backup WordPress. Why? If, you know, what if my backup's contaminated? What if the core is actually contaminated? I'm going to be restoring a backup from yesterday that's contaminated? No, I don't want that. I want to make sure that I'm running on a clean slate. So I'm going to install the newest up-to-date version of WordPress on a fresh install so that I know, without a doubt, I don't have to worry about scanning my site to make sure it's clean. No, it's clean because it's brand new. And then you go through the manual process of creating a new database. Do not use that old database. You'll actually want to delete that old database and the, user, and the old database username. Create a new database name and a new database user. And this is something I found out that's a problem too. And I've just, I never really thought about it before until I saw it, I don't know, about a year ago. Sometimes people make their username and their database name the same. Well, that's, that's, not, that's not hard to figure out because someone will try it. They'll go, well, you know, I, and they'll sometimes make their password the same. Don't do that. <laughs> You, the key here is you want to make it hard for someone to get in because we don't want them to get in, you know? So make sure those things are different. Make sure they're not predictable. What's great about cPanel, uh, if you've done any form of web development in the past, you'll notice that there's, a, there's cPanel and MySQL, and they will create a database for you. Ah, oh, great. You'll, you type in a name, and they'll, they'll use your domain name to create part of your database name. That's predictable. Don't do that. Make it unpredictable. Same thing with your user. Make it unpredictable. And don't just add USR after your database name. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> but you know, that's the things you gotta, that's why it's important to review your website. Because maybe when you made it, you were tired. It was two o'clock in the morning. You've been working all day. And you had a moment of poor judgment, and you were in a rush because you're tired, or someone was. So it's good to review things either with a second set of eyes or even just fresh set of eyes the next day or periodically. I highly recommend regularly on a schedule, either every year or six months, depending on your, uh, depending on your type of business and how scaled it is, uh, so that you can catch things like this. At this point, once you have a new database and you have a new database user, and that user has access to the database with all permissions, you're going to go ahead and import your backed up database. Now, 
Well, how far do you go back on your data on your backup? That's hard to say. Uh, I don't know. It depends. When did you notice it? <laughs> That's the frustrating part about importing a backup. So if you import, you go through this process, you create a new WordPress site, you get it going, blah, 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 you, and you find out, you restore your backup, and your backup's contaminated from yesterday. We're going to have to do it again. But guess what? You're going to get good at it, <laughs> or someone is. Not really ideal, but maybe I like to say, if I can go back a week, I want to actually go back as far as I can go back that I know that the data will be okay. So if I haven't edited the website in about a month, I'm going to go back as far as I can go because I want to ensure that this website is not contaminated because I don't want to do this again. I'm already emotionally distressed. You know, uh, doing it a second time is just not, I mean, you're probably going to be really upset about it. So once you've got your backup database in, in place, you'll put your backup files in place. Now keep in mind, I said I don't back up WordPress itself. I only back up the WP content directory or specific folders within that directory. More specifically, the active theme. If you're a child theme, you probably want to bring the parent theme with you. Important to do. Also, depending on the type of plugins you're using, if you're using uh, premium plugins, you may want to back up all your actual plugins. But if you're not using premium plugins, back up the list of plugins and install new ones because maybe they're contaminated. I like to take as less risk as possible because I don't want to do this again. And unfortunately, I say that because I have done this again. I've done four restores on one website because it wasn't right on any of the first three. And that's why I say, I hope you didn't have plans on Friday because your week might have been ruined. <laughs> My week was ruined, and it, it was, and it kept, and I kept reliving it. And so we don't want that to happen. Once you've got your website back up and running. You've got your files in place that you just downloaded. You zipped them or you got them from wherever. They were probably zipped or in a tar file, an archive file. You put them on your website. Well, it's important to check your actual file permissions. And this is not something I used to do. And I ran into a scenario where I had migrated a site. It wasn't hacked, but I had migrated a site from one server. I downloaded a backup of it to my local desktop, then I uploaded it to the future server. When it was all said and done, my permissions were a wreck. They were all wrong, meaning they were vulnerable. People who could see files that they shouldn't be able to see, could write to files that they shouldn't be able to write to, and I say people like you people. All the people that don't have access to my website could write to my website. And I was just, wow, that's, I mean, how can I prevent this? Well, if you have command line access to your server, a good system admin will write a, a one-liner, hit enter, and it'll recursively change all your file permissions and fix them. Well, but if you don't have access to your server, how are you going to do that? So I decided to make a handy-dandy tool because I do not always have access to the website server that I'm working on. It may be you know, maybe it's, I don't have access, whatever the reason is. It's not my server. It's not a server I have access to. It's on shared hosting, whatever. I wanted a tool to be able to audit that very quickly and be able to correct those issues. And so Security Safe, which is the plugin that I built, does have this ability. I don't know of any other plugins that do this. That's kind of why I created it. There might be some out there. So if there are, please let me know. I'd love to know. Um, but this is a free tool. Even if you don't use Security Safe for a, your security plugin, install it. Do a quick audit on your files. Make sure they're good. Make them right, and then uninstall it. And I do that a lot. Um, so that was extremely handy to me and a really big eye opener because that was a blind so it was a blind spot for me when restoring and migrating sites. You learn the hard way. So hopefully you won't have to experience that. In addition, 
once your website, so once you've got your, you know your files are good, you've got your theme back up and running, and you're like, whew, I'm out of the, I'm good, right? Not yet. Your website's back up and running, everything looks good, but now we need to do a little due diligence here. We need to make sure that everyone that's logged in needs to be logged out. And you can do this if you go into the WP config file in the, um, in the actual uh, public HTML directory, your root of your website. There's this, you see all this stuff right here? All that, whatever that is? <laughs> they call them keys, or secret keys or salts. You can actually go to that HTTPS API.wordpress.org secret key, and it will, if you go there in your web browser, it will generate a new crazy little key for you. And you can delete that whole section and paste it back in there and save it. And once you do that, immediately, everyone will be required to log back in. In addition to that, you want to probably force everyone to reset their passwords as well. But I like to do it, I would probably force everyone to log out. I actually had to maybe a little backwards, maybe have them change their passwords first and then force them to log out. Because uh, if they change their passwords and they're actively logged in, they're still logged in. So, but regardless, if your website's been hacked, even though you did have a new prefix that wasn't WP underscore, this would be a golden opportunity to change it again, um, just for good measure. You don't have to, but I would, because if someone got into your database, now they know the structure of your old database. Change it. There's plugins that do it, but uh, I will warn you, that this, is, this can break things. And so you want to make sure you, you're either, you know what to expect and you know where to go and fix it. I get nervous every time I do it, but I, I eventually get it to work. And I always forget where one little thing is. And depending on what plugins you have, some plugins may rely on that prefix. So it could be kind of hairy on changing a prefix after an install of WordPress. So if you're reinstalling WordPress, be sure to actually change it before you get everything back up and running. If you want to know how to do it, here's a link. I forgot to mention it earlier, but there's actually a link at the end of this presentation and at the beginning that you can go to to reference all these links and reference this presentation at a later time. So, um, but this is a reference to WP Beginner. It has a video, and it's, very, it's pretty, uh, pretty in-depth, so it's, it's very helpful. I find myself going there all the time, and I don't really consider myself to be a beginner. Force all users to change your passwords. Well, how do I do that? I don't know. That's why I have a link here that I use to reference because I'd rather focus on remembering to do something else because I don't do this all the time either. I only do it when I need it. So maybe part of your plan when you're making your written plan is you have links to these things that are easy. Maybe it's a Google Doc that you just have and you share with developers and they have access to that. So have these links in there too. Just because they know how to do it doesn't mean that they have to remember it. We want to cut down that time from your servers, your website's down to the time it's back up and running as if nothing happened, like SurfPro. We want to make that as small as possible. And don't forget to clear your cache. You might be looking at that hacked website a couple times, especially if you're using security or Cloudflare. Bots me all the time. So it, once you realize your website has been hacked, disable cache uh, is usually the first thing that I like to do. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but that would be smart to do. You don't want to go round and round for an hour and then realize you've been looked at a, the wrong version this whole time because it was a static cached version. A lot of times people forget, you know, they don't change their password on their hosting account after they've been hacked. Probably not necessary, but I like to think that, I like to consider everything tainted. Everything's bad. Everything that you had in place, something didn't work. We don't know what didn't work, so we're gonna, we're gonna start over. I just like to be sure. Do they have your password? I don't know. Well, let's make sure they don't. So change your hosting password. And some people say, well, why would you change your email password? Well, probably because you emailed your password 
to somebody and they had access to your email. Use one time secret.com, fantastic little tool. I use it all the time to share credentials. Um, don't email passwords. It's not encrypted. Email is very, it's about as secure as me yelling across the room. It, same thing with text messages, not secure. So do not use, and I don't care if it's Gmail or not, it's not secure, technically. Um, and also change the password of your computer. We don't know how your website got infiltrated. Was it your computer? Was it your email? Was it something else? Let's just be sure. Now, it's funny. Normally, the first thing someone wants to do when they get a, when they get, they're, they're like, oh, my website's hacked. They want to scan it. They want to install a security plugin and scan it. And that sounds like, the right thing to do on one hand, but that takes a while to do. And depending on your hosting, if you've got your own server, fire rocket, fire away, you know, you're going to eat up a lot of resources running that scan. And if you've got your own server, that's fine. But if you don't, if you're on shared hosting with someone else, your website might get kicked off the server as a result because you're using too many resources and it affects the other websites on that server. So, I'm very cautious about scanning a website for malware. I like, to, again, I like to just be sure, not just say, well, the scan didn't show anything, but are you 99.9% .9 sure? I don't like to be that sure. I like to be 100% sure. Is WordPress infected? No, I installed a new version. Perfect. Is your plugins infected? No, I installed new versions. And I went and downloaded the premium version that I did have and installed it fresh. Everything's fresh. It's not infected. Great. So at that point, the only thing that could possibly be infected is your backup. No scan needed. Now, if, if you've exhausted everything, you've, you've installed your website and you're on round four, you know, and your website is still hacked, then you may have to scan your site. There is a, there is a reason to scan your site at a certain point, but I prefer, that's like my last resort. So... Um, I, I would, that's my advice when it comes to scanning a website for malware. So how do we keep these things from happening again? You know, we put things in place so that they don't happen, and then unfortunately things, bad things do happen. Bad things happen to good people, but, and to good websites, and bad websites. But regardless, we don't want it to happen again. So how do we keep that from happening? Well, one, remember that file that we said don't delete, package up that contaminated version? If you do know someone that is a developer that has any slither of experience dealing with hacked websites, see if they will take a look at it and give you, this may be worth investing in if your website's important to you. Hey, can you give me some advice? Take a look at this backed up hacked website, install it on Docker or Vagrant or whatever you're using and tell me, elevator speech, why it got hacked. May be worth it to you. Because it's, it's important to figure out why you got hacked. And maybe it's as simple as you know. Well, you know, I've been using the same password on my bank account and my, you know, my computer and my Facebook account and my Twitter account. And my Twitter account got hacked, and guess what? So did my website because I didn't, I was recycling passwords. Don't do that. If you know what, for the most part, why it got, it happened, then you know, you may not, you could probably skip that, but um, again, I don't like to just assume. Uh, again, it also depends what's your budget, what, what you got going on, how big, how important is this site? You know, if it's just a small site, then maybe you just, you know, take a little bit more due diligence in the future on securing your site and move on. But one thing people forget to do is, have you looked at the users currently in your website? I wouldn't do that until you actually restore your backup because you want to make sure that all the users are actually supposed to be in there. And if you've got inactive accounts, get rid of them. If you're not sure if an account is active, here's how you find out. Change their password. And if you don't hear nothing for a while, eh, you know, like a month or so, delete it. Worst case scenario, 
you have to create a new account when you get a phone call or an email. Worst case scenario. So I would rather know that I would rather know that I accidentally deleted someone else's real account than to, and keep in mind, their email's on there too, so you could email them and say, hey, are you using this account? And they're like, no, okay, trash it. I'd rather know that I deleted someone's account by accident than to leave one in there that someone's got a back door to get back into my freshly installed clean website that they're going to wreak havoc on in the next week or so. Because a lot of times, if your website's been hacked, the chances of it being hacked again are pretty high. So, Audit the list of users. Also, what kind of permissions do they have? Do you have other administrator uh, users in your, in your account? Should they be administrative users? If you don't know if they should, downgrade their user. Make them a subscriber and see what happens. See if they complain about it. If they don't, let it ride. <laughs> You'll find out. I mean, worst case scenario, you gotta change it back. Not a big deal. I'd rather, I'd rather make a, a mistake like that and just say, oh, sorry about that. I, we got hacked, and I'm just trying to tighten up the fence, make sure it, everything's working. So also remove any unused themes on the site. So you're probably familiar, if you install WordPress, you, you've seen or you've installed WordPress years ago, and your, web, your, your website's a, a few years old. It's 2018 now. Well, there's a theme called 2017. Even better yet, there's a theme called 2010. And if there's a vulnerability in that theme, they do roll out updates for them. But if you're not using it, why have it? Delete unused themes. It's a risk that you're taking that's just unnecessary. Unless your theme is built on that and you're using it as a child theme. I mean, you're using it's the parent theme and you've got a child theme. That's the only reason why you would have another theme. Um, anytime that I ever need to go, okay, I've got a problem and I don't know what it is, but I need to test it to see, if, is it the theme or is it a plug-in? And I'll install the latest 2017 or 2018 theme, switch to it, nope, problem's still there, switch back, delete the theme that I'm not using, purely for testing. That's the only reason I would ever have an extra theme around temporarily. Other than that, you don't need it. So get rid of things you don't need. Change your passwords on a schedule. This is probably the hardest thing and the easiest thing to do. And I say hardest because no one does it. Uh, maybe no one does it. Some people do it. I don't do a good job at it. Um, I, I'm, I'm doing better. I'm going to meetings. You know, I'm going to WordPress meetings. And, but in reality, you need, to stew, you need to have a schedule of changing your passwords. And I'm not saying just for your website. I'm saying for everything. And that's a task. It is not a fun one either. But... There are things like LastPass out there that can manage your passwords for you, and you can set up expiration notifications for you. Use something like that. LastPass is free. There are some paid features that you can get if you're starting to get into you know, like sharing your passwords with other agencies or other developers if you're a company. But if you're not a company, or even if you are, you can use the basic features for free. There's, it makes no sense to me to try to remember all these passwords, because the only one you're going to remember is the one you use on every website. And that's the wrong way to go about it. So make your passwords unique and make them managed by some type of management system. And LastPass is a great one. I only say that. I, don't, uh, I say that because I use LastPass. Um, I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever. But you can set up expiration dates for your passwords and just follow through with that. This is a big one. And this doesn't happen as much with newer sites, but it does happen with older sites, WordPress sites, sites that have the username admin. If your username is admin, log in as admin, and you're probably an administrator, which means you can create a new, uh, a new user, create a new user with your email. You'll probably have to use a different email than the admin's current email because it won't let you. But nevertheless, create a new account that's administrator, log out, log back in as that new account and delete that admin account because that is the number one, the first attempt that a hacker is going to try to log in with on your website is admin and, a, and about 14 million plus versions of a password. So that's an easy one to mitigate. 
Also, do not email, as said before, do not email or text passwords. Don't, I mean, and uh, I guess it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, don't send credit card information or any type of sensitive data that should be, that you wouldn't just share with a stranger. Because someone that would have access to email, you probably don't know them. So use something like One Time Secret. That's, uh, that's temporarily stored and it's encrypted, so to share credentials. Does anyone have any questions or scenarios with security that they uh, would like to talk about or ask? Correct, yes. Here you go. All right, we've got about, we've got a few minutes. Um, I'll talk uh, real quick about some issues I've ran into with security. Um, I'd say the biggest ones would be not in an emergency scenario. Once you have a plan, and it, your plan really doesn't have to be something crazy unique, um, but one issue that you'll run into is people try to compensate security on their website for lack of security in their hosting. And there for a while, I didn't have a security plugin at all on my website. Now, I currently have a security plugin and I implement it, and I don't always use mine. It depends on the website, uh, what their needs are. But there's, and it depends on the server, because I have security implemented at the server level to take care of things from ever hitting my website. So, for example, tomorrow I'm going to talk about page speed optimization. And if you want your website to load faster, then you probably, the less things that you have loading as far as security, the faster it's going to run. And I think that's a, that's a big attraction there. So the question is, do you try to take care of security at the website level? Or do you try to take care of security at the hosting level, which is a level above where you probably have access? And so it depends. It depends on your budget. It depends on who you're talking to also. Maybe a hosting company. I mean, ultimately, if, if, if a hosting company ever says, well, that's not our problem, your website got hacked, I mean, technically it is. That's actually their job. I provide hosting for my clients, and I provide it, you know, uh, using another hosting company, providing the server for me, but I take care of the customer and so on and forth. But it's my responsibility, but it's also their responsibility to ensure that things are updated and maintained, security patches and so forth. So if your website is running old versions of, say, PHP, for example, that we do know are vulnerable, then you need to contact your hosting company and say, hey, this is a problem. And say, we need to upgrade that. If they're not, I mean, maybe, maybe that's there for a reason. Maybe it's outdated for a reason. Find out why. Hey, your we my website's running on PHP 5.3. Why? That's a known vulnerability that is no good or anything less. You need to be running at least 5.6. Yes? You talked a little bit about the enforcement of the patient. That's the problem. Where it may not be being sold, it's being sold. Absolutely. Um, what I would recommend, what the question he just said is, could I talk about the HT access file? Um, because once you reinstall WordPress, it may not be there. Uh, I would recommend that when you're reinstalling WordPress, if you've not done it a lot, if you're the one actually doing this, uh, follow a guide. Make it part of your plan. And um, of course, HT access, if you're using, now that's only if you're on an Apache server. So HT access will not be really in play if you're on an Nginx server. And again, this is a conversation you have to have with your hosting company because it does matter. So you can implement, you'll at least have to have the rewrite rules in your HT access file so that your WordPress actually is displaying those pretty URLs, forward slash whatever uh, words with hyphens in it and so forth, and not just a bunch of you know, cryptic stuff in the URL address. 
However, another aspect, if you want to take security more into your hands, you can prevent people from logging into your site or brute forcing your site by using HD access to find rules, uh, to define rules that will limit access, either by IP address or by a password. That's a tactic that happens a lot. Um, I don't really go into that for this talk. Uh, time doesn't really allow for it. However, do, uh, you know, do search. There's, uh, there's a talk that I did a year ago that kind of talks about some of those things that gets more specific in uh, WordPress security. Um, there's other talks that plenty of other people have done about WordPress security. Watch as many of them as you, as you can you know, find time to do and implement what makes sense for your site. But I like HT Access for a point that I can really cut down the load of my site, especially the bandwidth and even my hosting bill because your hosting could be based on your, you know, you could get maxed out on your, what your bandwidth is, uh, especially if you're getting attacked every day, you know. Uh, so implementing HT Access security is a, is a really attractive thing, but uh, I would Google for more information on that. Yes? I do follow quite a few people. Um, you can actually, and I don't have it on here, but my website is uh, sovstack.com, but sovstack is my Twitter uh, account. It's also the same, uh, same user handle for my WordPress account. And I like to share that information on, you know, on Twitter because I've got, I actually you know, follow Jonathan over here because sometimes he shares things that are, affect me. And if he's not really, focused on security, I like to share things that he's going to find useful in the moment. So I try to share as much of that information as I can. Obviously, security is a huge topic, and so I follow other people. Um, I, I follow, follow other leading plug-in developers in the industry and in, the, in just the security field in general. You probably won't want to do all of that <laughs> unless you're really into security. However, um, I would try to figure out who is that person and that knows what they're doing that's really good at security and make them part of your team. The key is have a team that's going to handle this. Don't try to go solo on fixing your website. I actually don't always fix my own problems for various reasons. Web development is a team sport. And it works better that way. Anyone else? Everyone, thank you for coming out. I hope that uh, this was helpful. And if you, uh, if you want to reference this presentation in the future, uh, this little URL at the bottom corner uh, will take you directly to this presentation and in, in in all the links that are in it as well. And if you ever have any questions, please, um, please tweet me on Twitter or send me a message uh, on my website, and I'd be uh, help uh, be more than happy to answer any questions uh, later on at the happiness bar. Thank you.